Oh boys, I finally got a present from the DMV today. It's about time. Part of the reason that Project Root has been delayed so much, actually, I should say the main reason, it has taken so long to get plates for this car because of the DMVs being closed and everything. You have to do everything via mail. New York is kind of messed up already, but to make it even worse, um, the whole COVID stuff had the DMVs all closed up and you could only do stuff via mail. But everybody was saying the DMV was going to open up for phase three of reopening uh, in New York. So I was all excited. I just decided to kind of wait it out a little bit because I still had some things to button up on this car, which was a big mistake because the DMV did reopen for stage three, but they opened up for appointment only stuff and um, new vehicle registration and title and registration stuff in general is still not something you can make an appointment for. So I got completely screwed and then I had to go. They finally opened up a drop box there so I went dropped off all the papers and it took them like almost two weeks to process everything to charge me my fees and to mail the plates back out which is super super annoying and that's probably honestly it's probably delayed this project like over a month just trying to figure out what to do about the dmv stuff and um partly my mistake for waiting yeah that really sucked but they're here so we already made a little bit of progress on this car and i'm going to start playing the footage here in just a second but we already did the suspension work of when i'm filming this and uh, i'm going to kind of do a little flashback to when we did that play you guys that and then we'll fast forward to now i'm pretty sure the fan might be a little weak the car runs fine and it doesn't like overheat or anything. I just feel like that could be a slight issue and it could have been part of the reason why the previous owner was having an issue with overheating. I do actually have a spare fan over here and I'm gonna be testing this as well and if um, it's in good shape, I can go ahead and throw that in the car in place of the one that's in there. The only evidence I have right now that it could be going bad is the sound. It sounds a little weak. I know the sound of the fans from the other cars and I remember replacing the fan on the daily cruiser a long 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 time ago and uh, i remember it just sounded weak and it wouldn't click on it would only click on or it would click on kind of late and that's kind of what this is reminding me of it might be you know just in the early phases of dying so we'll see we'll talk about that later but for now let's go ahead and take a little trip back in time probably a week or two ago from when i buttoned up the suspension on this then we'll fast forward back to today what is going on ladies and gentlemen thanks for tuning in for the next episode of project vert i am so excited for this episode because hopefully in this episode we're going to be buttoning up the last few little things taking care of our suspension issues figuring everything out and hopefully finally getting this thing registered and driving and then we can finally take it out for a drive which I am so excited for. So something I want to update you guys on really quick before we got started is I talked about how the car was pulling super, super hard to the right. It was really bad when we drove it just a tiny bit before and we were testing things out. The suspension felt awful, but after having it parked in here for another day or two after I filmed that, I noticed that a couple of the tires were looking really low on air and it was something that completely slipped my mind was to check the air pressure. And this tire was like almost flat. So it probably has a leak. We probably need to get two new front tires. The rear tires are actually newer and they look really nice. I went ahead and checked all of our tire pressure and filled them all up with air. They were all a little bit low and the one was like I said almost flat. Once we took care of all that I took it out for another quick little spin off camera and it drove way straighter. Although the alignment still feels really off that helped a lot. So I think we're just dealing with what we thought from the beginning which is our tie rods. So we're gonna go ahead and take them apart today and get them done first. We got all Mevotech tie rod stuff. This is the stuff that I used in the past on other cars. I had these on the daily. One nice thing about these Mevotech ones is the ends of the inner tie rod ends are actually squared off just a tiny bit. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like there's a flat edge. And that allows me to use a special tool to torque them back on, which makes life a little bit easier. But I basically have two separate inner tie rod end tools here that I use, and I'll be using them both on this job most likely. But essentially, this big one that we see here with all of our little inserts, this is for inner tie rod ends that are squared off a little bit, just like these. Slide this giant tool over our inner end and then use whatever insert fits on the end here and I pop it here into the end of our tool. And then I can go ahead and go on the other end, put my wrench in here and torque them to spec. If we're taking it apart, oftentimes when you go to take your old tie rod and it's off, you'll find that it didn't have any squared off ones on there. Perfectly round and flat. And it's like, how do I take that off? And that's where this little tool comes in handy. This is basically kind of, kind of similar to like an exhaust clamp or like any sort of U clamp, U whatever. But it's a little different. This is a lot heavier metal and it's got these little splines that help it grip. And then we'll get a couple of extensions linked together and put them in here and then we can break it loose from outside. That's what I use to do this job and it makes it so much easier. You can rent tools like this from like AutoZone or whatever. Um, you might even be able to find these there. I don't know. I ordered 
ordered this one off Amazon. I'll try to put links to both of these in the description because I think I got both of these at Amazon, but that's what I'm gonna be using to do our tie rods. So without further ado, let's knock this job out. That was super easy, and this tie rod end, holy crap. Talk about disgusting. <laughs> Boot is completely ripped apart. There's so much crud and nastiness in it. So I just gotta go ahead and remove this outer end. I have to loosen the jam nut, but in order to do that, I'm actually gonna pop this back in like that so that it keeps it from just spinning. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our jam nut loosened up and get our outer tie rod end off. Oh, there we go. There she goes. <laughs> Now I just gotta reach back in there with my long boy screwdriver and break that clamp so that it comes out. Well, my camera died, but I got the boot off when I broke the clamp, it was pretty easy. I also forgot there was a tiny little clamp on the little breather tube. I didn't take it off, but it still slid off, so I'm gonna have to remember to take that off. Most people don't even run a clamp on that, but I also went ahead and put our little clamp remover thing on there. You can see I put it upward so that I could put one of these little wrenches on it, tighten it down the best I could. And you can see I got three extensions linked together. Not sketchy at all. And now we're gonna try to go ahead and break this stupid thing loose. Whew. Our extensions literally exploded, but we got it broken loose, so that's a plus. There we go. First tie rod is completely taken apart. Don't wanna forget my little rack spacer here. This little plastic piece is gonna go on our new tie rod and then space the rack out so that we don't rub on anything. Yeah, now we're already ready to start assembling things again. All right, boys, we are back at it, and we are back at it with the new camera. Part of the videos, like like two or three of the videos that I've recently filmed, part of them is gonna be filmed on my old camera, and part of them is gonna be filmed on the new camera. So it's gonna be kind of an interesting little transition randomly halfway through the video, but I would say a very good one too. For those of you who haven't seen some of the other videos, I talk more about this in one of my vlogs, but I've just got a new Canon G7X Mark II for vlogging and uh, making the videos with. It's a lot better quality, I think, and uh, I'm still getting used to using it, so hopefully it will continue to get better, but got everything buttoned up with our tie rod ends, and I got our little grease fitting in. Gave it in a little alignment with the Eyeballer 9000, these babies right here, and I got it fairly straight. Of course, we're gonna get it aligned, and I'm gonna have to get the car inspected anyways very soon once we get placed for it and get on the road, so once we do that, we'll be all set, but for now, we're looking good to go. Everything else seems solid. Even our brakes seem good on this car, honestly. The last owner said they were new before the car got parked, so. that cutie she's looking good it's way too nice out to have the top on though let's get that thing down there we go now we cruising baby <laughs> okay, our alignment is about to be extremely whack but that's okay just want to see how bad it is just for me eyeballing it <laughs> Off to the right, but it's actually driving pretty straight. <laughs> I guess just the wheel was slightly off when I did it. It feels way better already, my god. She's ready to go cruising. This is gonna be way too fun. 
just me or does the convertible have a better turning radius? It feels like it does. Maybe it's slightly shorter and it makes it feel like it, but that's interesting. <laughs> There's just something about driving this that is just so awesome. I can't explain it. <laughs> Can't wait to get plates on this thing, but we still got a few more things to button up. Still have to figure out what's going on with our fan, but we'll figure it out. And welcome back to the future. Uh, we got our suspension and everything buttoned up. I didn't expect our plates to come for another day or two, honestly. And uh, I wanted to kind of get this buttoned up before they came, but they already came here at the beginning of the week, which is good. So I want to do a couple things today so that we can button it up and actually take this car out for its first drive. First thing I want to do is give it a little bit of a string alignment. The alignment is still off from when we redid the suspension. So I'm going to kind of get it a little bit closer just so we can drive it a little bit. I will have to take this thing to get it inspected and uh, also give it a professional alignment while I'm there. The other thing I also have to do is reinstall our upper motor mount. I never actually did that. See, I have the plate sitting right here with our old motor mounts and I have our brand new motor mount right there in the box for our upper. I know I keep calling them motor mounts even though they're technically not, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I still have not installed that, so we're gonna have to install that here at some point. It's not a, a huge necessity. So first of all, let's go ahead and get our little string alignment done so that we can move on and maybe even take this thing out for a spin tonight. So essentially how this trick works is I got two jack stands set up here and I just got string tied between them. A lot of you old timers that still watch me are going to probably laugh at this trick because it is, it is a good one. It's very, very inaccurate, but it works. Essentially you're going off of the rear wheel alignment to get the front ones close enough. Basically I measure off the lip of the rear wheel to the string and keep going back and forth until it's pretty much even. You can see we're like r right past like three and three quarters of there. And then when we get it lined up over here or right after three and three quarters there pretty close and you can already see how far off our front wheel is <laughs> yeah that's pretty bad i eyeballed it and i did a terrible job at eyeballing it right after fiddling with our alignment for like maybe 15 minutes or so everything is still lined up in the back our steering wheel i actually put a piece of tape in the steering wheel so that i could make sure that it stays lined up as well what some people will do is actually use a ratchet strap or something and ratchet strap the steering wheel to like the bottom of the seat to make sure the steering wheel stays in the same space and then they'll actually put the front wheels on a piece of cardboard or something to kind of help them move a little bit more freely it's definitely probably a more accurate way to do it but i don't really care i just want to get it close you can see where we are right there approximately and you can see where we are right here we're like just barely like a sixteenth of an inch probably not even a sixteenth of an inch uh toe in which is right about exactly where we want with just a tiny bit just to kind of help it drive a little straighter we got it done on this side so now we just got to go to the other side knock that out really quick then we should be good to go all right, got the side looking good as well. Just like, like I said, like less than a 16th of an inch toe in. Everything is double checked. And uh, I think it's good enough that we can go ahead and fill up our tires and uh, maybe take this thing out for its first spin. It's time to say goodbye for our 2018 inspection sticker. All right, got it all stickered up, plates are on. We are 100% legal. Ready to go on our first drive. I'm really curious to see how well it goes, see if we find any more issues or anything. I guess there's only one real way to find out. I've noticed a little bit of a brake smell more recently. Like, uh, you know, when your brakes get really hot, there's a very distinct smell that they give off. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe something is a little bit seized up in the brakes. It could be just like a guide pin or something from the car sitting for a really long time. So you might have to check that out, but I'm just gonna drive it a little bit, see how it feels, see if we get any smell or anything like that. But let's do it, guys. Got a lot of shit that's going on. I've been dealing with it all. I've been building, getting stronger. They ain't never leaving me alone. Always calling up my phone, asking for the bankroll. I just had to leave my own city. To give up who I love just to get what I love Have you ever felt the feeling when you know everybody watching everything you do Trying to see if you really got enough Well boys, 
We made it. We made it on our maiden voyage in the convertible. I definitely, can I smell it still? I don't smell it right now, but I could smell some hot brakes. It's definitely what it smelled like at least. Um, it could just be them needing to be cleaned up a little bit. They don't feel the best. It's probably, you know, old fluid in them too. So uh, probably fluid flush would benefit that greatly. But there could also be like a C-step caliper, uh, like a guide pin or something or, or a sticky one. And uh, that needs to be redone. But I think I definitely want to take the brakes apart and clean them up, make sure. Oh yeah. Oh, I could smell it. I can smell it for just a second there. I think we definitely have a little bit of cleaning up of the brakes to do. That brake seems okay. This brake. Oh, yeah, that's stinky. That's really stinky. Whew. God, I think I just burnt my nostrils. So that's, there's something going on there. I think probably caliper guide pin is sticking a little bit. That immediately just turns to steam. That is really, really hot. <laughs> the next day. All right, boys, we back out here on a new day. I already got the vert jack back up and get the wheel off so we can go ahead and check out what's going on with our brake. This is definitely, definitely the one that's getting hot. The brake rotors look like brand new and the pads look pretty much brand new too. So something definitely caliper related going on. I'm hoping it's just a pin. Both of our guide pins seem to be perfectly fine, which is not what I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping that one of them was our issue, but our brakes honestly look perfectly fine, which is not good. Also, whoever put this together and, and did the brakes and stuff really loved anti-seize, if you can't tell, which, I mean, makes my life easier, but it's also making a dang mess everywhere. <laughs> so I went ahead and threw the caliper back on, and now I'm going to go ahead and actually pump the brakes and see if I can get them to stay locked up so that I can kind of go from there and figure out what's going on. Hopefully it's not a blockage in the line. It could just be like the hose got pinched or something, but I really kind of want to get this into a lockup situation so that we can, we can tell a little better. Why won't you lock up? <laughs> this is really weird. None of our lines or anything is, that's clearly visible it looks damaged at all. This is a hard one to figure out. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and pull our caliper back off, re-grease our pins, clean everything up, and I'm also gonna put some grease here on our little slide pins here, or whatever these are called, these, these hardware pieces that uh, everything slides on here. I'm thinking maybe our piston um, is locking up some of the time and might need to be rebuilt or just get a new caliper on here. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna guess right now, but there's only one way to find out, so go ahead grease that up real quick and uh, take it for another spin. Got our brake caliper mounting bracket thing all painted up and looking good to go. And I also went ahead and shot the brake caliper with some high heat paint. I probably should have painted the bracket with high heat paint too, but I use that high performance uh, Rust-Oleum enamel stuff, which should work just fine. It's looking a little bit better. I'm gonna do the same on the other side here at some point, but I wanted to get everything cleaned up and painted while we were at it. It was looking pretty bad. It had like some old red paint on it and uh, it was all just chipping really bad. So and now we can go ahead and re-grease our pins and continue cleaning everything out and put all that back together. I'm kind of tempted to run and buy new hardware as well. I mean, this hardware doesn't look bad, but it has definitely seen better days. I don't know how well you guys can see, but it's been pretty corroded. So 
far so good. Right, guys cruised around for probably 10 minutes or so maybe 15 minutes i smell nothing brake related everything seems to be looking good and working just how it should a few inches later psych just took her out for another little drive here and i uh, start going up a hill i have no power and i can already smell the brakes oh yeah they're smoking oh my god dude this sucks <laughs> oh yeah she real stinky now Oh yeah, I can see smoke a little bit. Let's see the heat lines. Oh, oh, hell no. Oh, that ain't good at all. Got our wheel back off and our caliper off and just kind of looking at our pads and our rotor and everything. The big thing I'm noticing right now after thinking about it a little more is that all of the heat lines and everything and all of the, the wear, the bad stuff, seems to be happening on front of our rotor. The back of the rotor still looks practically brand new. And you can see there's like heat marks in the front of the rotor and everything from it scrubbing. So this must be the front pad that's really the one that's catching, which doesn't make a lot of sense because the pad in the back usually wears more than the one in the front. And if it was something with the caliper or piston, I would think that it would be the back of the rotor where you'd be getting all the wear. So what would make more sense is if it was hardware related, like a, a guide pin or, you know, our hardware or something causing it to catch. So I really can't figure it out. I, I don't know. A few moments later. I noticed this little line here. And uh, when you pull down on it, you can see there's actually a hole in the rubber boot here around the piston, which is not something you want to see. It could mean that debris has been getting in there, causing it to clog up, but who really knows? I'm definitely starting to wonder if maybe our caliper is seized up a little bit. Maybe it needs to be cleaned out, and we might be able to fix this one if that's the case, but uh, not really sure, as long as there's not any internal damage done. So I don't know, I gotta figure something out. Also, I got to thinking, because I, I was confused, because all of the wear seemed to be on the front of our brake, and I figured that that would mean hardware, because a stuck caliper I would think would push against the back, but I got to thinking. When you press the brakes, it pushes in on the back, but then when you let off and it doesn't retract, it might cause a little bit of back pressure here on the front and uh, cause the front to rub more than the rear. So it, I guess it could still be the caliper sticking, but that's that's what seems to be making sense now, especially after seeing that hole. I'm really starting to think that, so we're gonna dive into that a little bit further now. She is. This looks like rusted and, and just not very good. It's hard to tell until we clean the caliper out here, drain the fluid out of it and stuff, but this does not look very nice. I don't think you guys can see, but there is a ton of crud up in there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a picture with my phone here real quick and post it in the video because I know you guys can't see it from here, from the camera because of the stuff in the way. I can't pull the camera down low enough. There is a bunch of dirt and grime in there that looks absolutely disgusting. The rest of the inside doesn't look too bad though. Um, probably just cleaning it up will be enough to um, get this good to go. I think that was definitely our issue. So we're gonna clean this out, do a kind of a, a little bit of a rebuild, make sure she's good to go and uh, throw her back together. Well guys, I made a little bit of a mistake. I wasn't sure how to get our outer seal on and I thought the way it would work best is if I went ahead and put the seal on our piston first and then force the piston in and then that would force the seal in, but I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't think that through and it turns out that it's definitely the opposite. There's no way the seal's gonna go in with the piston in, so I should have put the seal into the caliper first and then push the piston through the middle. This is my first time doing anything like this with the caliper, so you know, it is what it is, but I went ahead and took the caliper off the car real quick. I probably should have done that before, but I just wanted to attempt to do it in the car. I am gonna have to force the piston back out though, and I'm going to attempt to do that with compressed air because that seems to be a cool little trick. So let's see what we can do. All right, 
it goes. Basically, I found a little barb fitting that was the exact same thread as threads that go in the caliper. I got a little piece of hose with some clamps, put it on my air hose, and um, that was just enough that we could pop this out. All right, I think we got everything to seal up correctly. My camera battery actually died, so I wasn't able to show, but basically what I ended up doing was sliding our boot just a little bit onto the piston and then pulling it outward, and then I was able to carefully kind of get it seated in the best I could and then push our piston in. That seemed to work the best, so I did technically put it on the piston first because when I tried to do that first and then push the piston through the middle, it was just too tight and it wasn't going to work, so kind of pulled it inside out and got it seated in, and then we slowly pushed our piston in. So I'm just going to throw this together, throw this thing back in the car, and... Um, test it out hopefully it works okay but if you do have any more issues if it does seem to lock up anymore i'm just going to go ahead and get a new remanufactured one but i wanted to try this just to try it Brakes feel real good. Don't smell anything yet. Ended up finding more issues than we originally expected, but at the same time, we got a lot solved, and we got this thing on the road. We got the plates here, and it's finally completely road legal, and it's actually running really well, despite the little things that still need to be taken care of. And you guys have a couple more episodes to look forward to before anything more happens with this car. This has taken way longer than I wanted it to. I was honestly hoping to have this car done like probably a month or two ago, at least, but you know how things go. Especially with the DMV, I was kind of on the fence as to what to do, how long it was gonna take, whether I was gonna be able to get plates in person, and and waiting on those for as long as I had to just kind of screwed everything up, but thankfully we're on it now. I'm doing my best to keep up with this car and the GT both at the same time and try to fix both their issues and balance back and forth between the two. Kind of a hard thing to have to do sometimes and have to bounce back and forth between projects and wait for parts for one and then, you know, work on the other. It can be a big pain in the butt, but I am thankful at least that this thing is moving. I'd say we did pretty good. We rebuilt the caliper for the first time in my life today, which was awesome. We redid the tie rods and everything, looked over the suspension, everything is tight the suspension does not make a noise brakes are new i got really lucky with all of that stuff honestly because those are weak points on these cars and we got to take it for its first drives which i hope you guys enjoyed the footage of those i really really enjoyed it this car is just so incredibly fun to drive and there's just something about it it's so crazy and it's even better than i would have ever expected i wanted to own one of these cars someday and i'm so lucky that i had this opportunity to have some fun with one now and it's all thanks to you guys so if you haven't already be sure to smash the subscribe button hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy that helps support me a ton Again, Again, leave a comment below if you have anything to say or if you enjoyed the video and turn on your notifications because you got you're gonna want to know when the next video comes out on this thing and again guys thank you so much for watching this quick little video you rock god bless you guys and i will see you in the next one peace out and